G'day guys, uh, so Flare Week's running currently along with a free flow event. Uh, speaking of which, if you enjoy this video and are thinking of purchasing Star Citizen, uh, my referral code is in the top left hand side of the screen there. So if you use that when you're buying a package, you'll receive an extra 5,000 UEC to spend in game. So the first day I uh, had MISC and Crusader Industries on display. I've done a video of Fleet Week, which I'll link up here. I'll chuck a link in the description for you to have a better look at Fleet Week and a bit about the background as to why it exists. So I took advantage of the ability to rent and fly a couple of the ships. Uh, the first one you can see here is the Crusader Industries Mercury, which is more commonly known as the Mercury Star Runner, or MSR. And the MISC Fury, which is the latest ship to be released. I'll go into a bit more detail on those later. The Fury does like a QT drive, so we're landing here on Daymar, so we can take a look at both of these ships. So exiting out of the MSR here real quick. I'm just gonna make sure I've got a helmet on. Don't wanna be heading out into the void of space with no helmet. It looks like some other people have had the exact same idea as me. So there's a Drake Cutlass Black over there. Looks like a Misk Freelancer. A couple of Furies on the pad. Uh, but we're going to head over here to the Platinum Bay building. And you can tell this building because it has the pads next to it where you would normally spawn in ground vehicles. Uh, the Fury is spawnable here. It also has these blue highlighting and that blue pile on there so you know you're heading in the right direction it looks like a misc fury ah, not fury freelancer max over there so just head in through this uh, airlock here into the building access the asop terminal and spawn us a misc mirai fury So the Fury is a snub nose fighter. So like the snub nose fighters, it lacks a QT drive, which is different from a jump drive. Uh, a jump drive would allow the ship to utilize jump points to travel to different st systems. Whereas this just lacks a quantum travel drive, which enables it to travel across the existing system faster. So she's a small ship, a little bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be, to be entirely honest with you. Looks about the right size to fit into that Mercury Star Runner I brought with me. Spoilers. Uh, we'll look at that later. Uh, so for now, this Fury comes equipped with uh, four, four size two laser repeaters, as well as four size two missiles. So she packs a hell of a punch. Uh, comes with a single small shield generator, single small cooler, and a single small power plant. So as we're talking about, it doesn't have a QT drive, so this is the kind of ship you're going to need to be putting in a larger one to carry it to battle. There's plenty of videos out there, these things will fit into Caterpillars, they'll fit into the Hercules, they'll fit into a lot of ships that are larger than it. Uh, my personal feeling though, you're going to be looking at the Kraken or the Liberator if you're really wanting to be running a fleet of these as an organisation. Like, oh, there is no room for anything else uh, in this fighter. Oh, a lot of people have said it looks like a TIE Interceptor. I, at the moment, I don't really get that vibe. Um, I guess it's kind of missing the swept forward wing look of the TIE Interceptor. Which you can get. You can deploy the wings forward to sweep the weapons forward. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just an aesthetic thing or whether it's actually functional and the weapons don't fire. I didn't test it. Probably should have. So you got all your controls. There in front of you, everything's accessible and clearly labelled power, shields, radar, weapons, canopy. And that little bar there will deploy your weapons forward and deploy the landing gear. Now the it doesn't actually have landing gear, oddly. Uh, what it does have is vectored thrusters. So the ship will just land on its wings with the vectored thrusters holding it there. And so like I said, with the wings swept forward, it does look a little bit more like a TIE fighter. 
Let me correct myself there. Not a TIE fighter, a TIE interceptor. Two very different ships. The Star Wars fanboys are screaming at me right about now. Uh, so yeah, she's a fast little ship. Very fast, as you can see. In atmosphere, did not take me very long to get up to quite fast speeds for in atmos. Uh, it's also very maneuverable. Take it through a, a few little spins here in a second just to see what it can do. Yeah, very, very quick there. Very agile. So we'll take it back to the landing pad over here. Take it back and see if we can squeeze this into the back of the MSR. Um, one thing I have seen, in, especially in other videos, I haven't tested it myself, uh, the Fury is a very fragile little ship, so it doesn't take much to knock off a wing. Uh, and the thing is, you knock off a wing because of the vectored thrusters uh, in, in each wing, it has four of them. If you lose one of them, you pretty much lose control of your ship. Uh, so anyone worried about this thing dominating PvP? It won't. Uh, being as fragile as it is, it will be blown up quite easily. So my MSR here, the servers are being really glitchy. Um, I think it's thanks to the free fly. So the MSR was not where I left it. Um, then it kind of just jumps back a bit. So I'm going to slow down the video here and we're going to see the MSR jump back to where I left it. And three, two, one, there it goes. So that kind of weirded me out a bit. And I was like, what the hell just happened? I could have sworn it was facing the cutty and now it's where I left it. Uh, anyway. Let's, um, let's park this Fury inside the Star Runner. So this isn't an easy thing to do. Uh, you need to take it slow. You need to be careful. There's one wrong move. You're going to take out both ships. How nice does that star run to look from behind, honestly? Whoever designed this ship, well done indeed. Oh, so like I said, it's kind of glitchy. We kind of glitched out a little bit there. I kind of, I was worried that I'd hit the, the star runner. I didn't, thankfully. I think what was happening was the, um, the Fury was automatically trying to land on the ramp of the star runner. So I've just got to kind of get it a little bit higher, a little bit higher than I'm comfortable with going, just to get it in there. So taking it nice and easy. You see, it just kind of wants to sit on the ramp there. But in the end, we get it there. There she is, and she's inside. As you can see, it fits pretty well. Uh, I'm of the opinion that with a bit of careful piloting, maybe side by side, you know, the Fury facing from left to right, you could probably fit two of them in. Uh, definitely one and another vehicle, maybe an Ursa would fit in there, or a Rock, possibly. Uh, or some other ground-based vehicle that's smaller. Anyway, we'll get out of the Fury now, now we've landed it. Now, one thing I do want to check is, and it should, will the ramp close with any issues? It shouldn't. Fury's in far enough. And there it goes. Closed. No issues whatsoever. Fits like a glove, as the saying goes. So now we'll just open this ramp back up, head back into the Star Runner. And yeah, since we're here, let's have a look around what is my favourite ship in the game. So the Mercury checks all the boxes expected of a dependable career vessel, and then some. If you get it there fast and unscathed, you can't do better than the Mercury. Built with the same engineering and design principles that has made Crusader the go-to manufacturer for galactic transport on any scale, the Star Runner chassis sets a new standard for data and cargo conveyance. So the first compartment we're in there, it's a cargo bay. Obviously it's large. The MSR can carry up to 114 SCU of cargo. Combine that with its speed, it makes a great cargo hauler. 
Off to the left is the engineering section where a number of the components are stored and accessible. Uh, and there is some evidence of the MSR's party trick. We will be coming back to that later though. So off to the left here is the elevator, takes you up to the second level. Uh, it's worth noting that that ladder is actually functional and should your MSR be without power, you can use it to get up to this level if needed. So this is a server section. Uh, so once data running is uh, in the game, this is where you'd store the data you're transporting. Uh, there's not a lot of information out there about data running at this stage. I'm guessing it's going to be stuff like jump points, shipwrecks, scanning planets for minerals and ore and taking all that data back and selling it. Or, you know, illicit uses, hacking a satellite for a criminal organization and then giving them the data you stole. So this is the scanning room. That's a bit of a useless section of the ship right now. Uh, it does however give you another hint to the MSR's party piece. So these are the top and bottom turrets. The MSR is well armed and fully crewed with six Panther repeaters, two pilot controlled, and two each for the top and bottom gunners. It also comes equipped with four size two and two size three missiles, which is more than enough to deal with all their most determined adversaries. This is the habitation section with three beds, storage for your gear, some desks for the crew as well. It's a place to rest. So there's your storage lockers, three beds, and there's your desk area. So out this door, across the hall, you come to the wreck area. Uh, it is a pretty good wreck area for a ship this size. Uh, you got a little fridge over there, a freezer, uh, an area for making hot drinks, cold drinks, reheating food, bench seat to sit at. There's a little chessboard there. Now, fun fact, the chessboard is interactable and should you wish you could stand there and play a game of chess with your buddy uh, the way you interact with the chessboard's a little bit clunky you can just like i guess in real life put pieces wherever you want um, this air four weapon racks so these are capable of holding four full-size shotguns or rifles or four handguns as you can see, the multi-tool there fits in perfectly. Yeah, through this door, you've got the section that leads to the bridge itself. So the bridge here has two seats, one for the co-pilot, one for the pilot. So we'll just hop into the pilot seat. So as you can see, you've got pretty good visibility through the uh, front cockpit here. The only downside is uh, when landing the ship, you've got that tiny little square right in front of you to see what's down below you. Thankfully, the game does have an external view. Um, you've also got a plethora of controls here, control everything physically. You've got a number of MFDs. We've got one, two, three, four, five MFDs there to play with, along with your heads up display gives you access to all the information you need while you're piloting the ship. All right, Crusader's design ethic is just it's so sleek, it's modern, and it's just nice. I don't know anyone who, who could not like the Crusader design ethic. So anyway, I alluded to a party PC MSR has. So uh, let's go explore that now. We are going to head down to the cargo section. So back through the server room here, into the cargo hold, down the elevator. There's the Fury again, still sitting there snug as a bug. So as I was mentioning, there is a little panel here uh, when I can get the interface to pop up, it's been a bit finicky for me. There it goes, up open. And then I accidentally clicked it closed again. Uh, we'll get it to open up again in a sec. Come on. Come on, there, no, there it is. Ah, uh, come on, there, okay. 
So we'll get this open and this will open up a door over to our left. Now this is a compartment that is, I call it the smuggling compartment. Uh, this is an unscannable section of the ship. So if you're being scanned by security, they will not be able to see what's inside here. So it makes this an awesome little smuggling ship. You think of the other section, which I thought was really kind of cool, this little crawlway here. Now with this crawlway, you actually have access to all the main compartments of the ship. So there is the habitation section you have access to. A little bit further along down here. Keep on going down and going. And that is the scanning section. So that one's acting a bit dodgy. Again, the free fly event made all sorts of issues with the servers. I was trying to spawn ships in Area 18 and you know, there was all debris through all the hangars. You go to a hangar and you get teleported back to the spaceport. Very frustrating. This is the recreation area. So you can pop your head up. Uh, you jump up like any ledge, up and out, and you're back out. So yeah, here we are in the recreation area. There's also a nice little, neat little trick here, uh, which we'll come back to. Uh, just make our way back to the cargo hold through this core space. There we are, back out into the cargo hold. If we close this panel. Close this one like we were never here. So yeah, back up into the elevator. Through the server room. Towards the bridge section. Turn off to the left, back to the rec room. So as I was saying, we'll just close this off real quick. There's a special little trick here. So what you can do is you grab the white queen here, the chest piece. You take it over to this drink holder, place it down on the drink holder and you can open that little hatchway from the rec room, which is kind of cool. If you didn't know that. Uh, so from this point here, uh, I thought, you know, let's take the Fury out, let's give it a test. We'll get a bounty. I'll record it, it'll be awesome. And then this happened. Yeah, it was the 30K. Though, to be honest, it's the first one I've dealt with in a while, so I can't really complain too much. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough of both ships, and you learned to love the MSR for all its quirks the same as I have. That's an awesome ship, well worth the purchase. It's available now through the store as part of Fleet Week, though I'd suggest buying it in-game. It's only 4 million Alpha UEC, which isn't a massive amount of money. With the mining and trading reworks, you could probably make that in a couple of weeks. So yeah, if you think I've done a good enough job with this one, you want to see more, please hit that like button, comment, maybe even subscribe as well as hit the notification button so you know when I release something new. Costs you nothing, lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing something right to suggest my videos to other people. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank everyone who watched my previous videos and decided to subscribe. I've only recently started creating this content and knowing there are people out there who enjoy consuming it, it's a good feeling. So catch you in the next one. Cheers.